want you to understand that I'm not the sort of fella that'll take just any old job you offer. No, sir. I want my kind of job with my kind of pay and my kind of hours. And let me tell you something else. If I could just talk, would I tell him plenty? Always practicing his conversations out on me just because he knows I can't talk back. Phooey. Now, these may well be Fido's thoughts. But poor Fido, being a dog, can't say what he thinks or take part in the conversation. And I'll need my own private office and a telephone uh, and a secretary and lots of filing cabinets. But since Fido is a dog, he doesn't have to worry about being nice to people. And so, when faced with being the listener in a one-sided conversation with George Johnson, he can do what comes naturally. Conversation is our most used device for meeting and getting along with people. And when, like George, you start talking to yourself or to animals, it's well to analyze your conversation. Conversation is as natural in your daily life as the air you breathe. Conversation is primarily a give and take proposition. You speak, you listen. You offer an idea, perhaps you accept an idea. Sometimes conversation is no more than a social howdy, such as... Hi, Sam, how goes it? Okay, Joe, how's it with you? Fine. Often, however, the ability to carry on a more involved conversation is of great importance to you. Oh, hi, George. You scheduled for an interview now, too? No, uh, I had an appointment for yesterday morning, but uh, I got tied up. Well, uh... I'm scheduled for an interview now, so maybe I'd better go in. Yeah, you go on in. I'll take a stroll around and try him later. Sam has given a little extra attention to appearing neat and efficient for this interview, because he knows that in any conversational situation, first impressions can be very important. What sort of work are you interested in, Mr. Henderson? Well, electrical engineering has been my main interest. However, I have had experience in other fields, for example. Sam will probably continue to make a favorable impression in this conversational situation, because he appears sincerely interested in what's being said. And he's courteous and tactful as to what to say himself and when to say it. Yes, Sam knows that his use of intelligence, interest, and consideration are paying factors in any conversation. How'd it go? All right, I guess. Well, step aside, son, and let an old master turn on the charm. Show him how it's really done. Let's just take a second. Wait for me, will you? Okay. Now, George is George. Not a bad guy once you get to know him. But George approaches most situations like a bull elephant. With him, it's charge and bellow. And now, Mr. Johnson, what type of job uh, is it? What I'd like to know is this. Yes, what sort of jobs you have and uh, how much do they pay? Well, now, I've uh, had all sorts of experience in a lot of different... George talks to people like he talks to Fido, with little regard for what effect what he says has on others or what someone else might like to say. To George, conversation means just one thing. Talk, talk, talk. And what does this style of conversational approach gain for George? Well, let's see. How'd you do? Cinch. Just told him what a sharp article I am. That's all there was to it. Say, uh, what about this party tonight? You going? Oh, uh, all we ever do at her house is watch TV. Anything good on? Oh, I suppose so. I don't know. Well, I'll be there. They always have food anyway. Come on, I'll let you buy me a cup of coffee. Okay. Good conversational ability serves us socially as a showcase for our personalities. Well, now here's a lovely personality. Hello. You're new here, aren't you? Uh, been in town long? My name's Sam Henderson. How do you like the party? Well, I don't know. Some of the other girls my sister used to. There are lots of people, and I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, I see a friend. I, I have to go now. I'll see you later, uh, maybe. Yes, remember. 
Every time you open your mouth, you put your personality in it. There are many good and bad types of social conversationalists. Just listen in on any group and, oh well, maybe this one. Say, what goes on here? All right, everyone, it's time. Time! Now, before I turn on the set, I want to warn you not to get too interested. Because tonight, I have a little surprise for you. I wonder what the surprise is our little hostess has in store for us this time. Probably a peachy game of musical chairs or spin the milk bottle. The program's starting. The show is on, time passes, and the little surprise our hostess has in store for us is all but forgotten. And then, it happens. John, did you hear that? It, it's your imagination. It's not him. I heard something. It's him. I know it is. He's come back to... Listen. <gasps> hey, hey it's all oh, be it's good. good. Surprise, everybody. Surprise. I've decided that because we always watch television at my parties, that tonight we'll do something different. What about the what program? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. We'll turn it on later. Now, first, I have a little surprise for you. We're going to do something just a little bit different tonight. We're going to have some real old-fashioned conversation. Well, surely you haven't forgotten how. <laughs> well, come along, Helen, you say something. But I... Some people have said that with television in our homes, there is no longer a need for social conversation. But then you never can tell when an emergency like this may come along. And then it's always handy to have something worthwhile to say. George, you say something. Uh, well, uh... Been pretty cloudy here the last three or four days. Uh, that, that reminds me, you know, the last time. Oh, George has something to say. In fact, as a conversationalist, George is pure perpetual motion. He isn't too sure just what he's saying, but he's going to make sure he says it. Helen just isn't interested. After all, if we aren't gossiping or discussing the latest fashions, who could possibly be interested? Bill's interested but only in slipping his foot into the conversational door. Bill's got a fish story he's been thinking about ever since this talking started, and he'll tell it or die trying. Marilyn is a lovely girl, and when she realizes how bad speaking habits have affected her voice, she will be well on her way toward becoming a better conversationalist. In this conversation, the process of communication has broken down. There's no give and take, no exchange of ideas. In short, no conversation. Well, how about these other folks? Maybe they're getting along a little better. But it seems to me that these people who are buying older homes are getting a raw deal. Maybe so, but look at it from this point of view. I think the people who own... Now, Chuck's not saying anything, but still he looks interested in what's being said. And after all, there is no communication without a receiver. Good listeners are good conversationalists. Jean is listening, too. She's also interested in what's being said. And when the time is right, she'll have something of value to add to the conversation. And it seems to me that most housewives would prefer what they'd gain from the old bill rather than the new. Well, I can see their reason for thinking that way. However, when we look at it from the long-range point of view, it's apparent that the new bill is... The people in this group, whether talking about world problems or the weather, have learned to discipline and direct their conversation with tact and with consideration for each other. Good public speech is simply enlarged conversation. Here Sam has to be a little more forceful, but he retains the conversational manner, and he remains warm and friendly with his audience. He's talking with them rather than at them. Right, all right, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. I guess this is the end of the conversation. It's television time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Good job, anyway, old man. I'd almost forgotten how much fun an evening of conversation can be. Well, was kind of nice for a change, wasn't it? Shh. It's time for the fights. It may be that future times will bring about many changes in the styles, subjects, and needs of conversation. 
but conversation nevertheless will always be important to you. The day you apply for that important job, the day you ask that special girl that special question, in your daily work, your daily play, on the telephone, or at the breakfast table. And because good conversation is important to you, it's well to remember, always share the conversation. Consider the other fellow's point of view. Be alive and interesting, both as a listener and as a speaker. Use the rules of good speech. Have something worthwhile to say, and say it in a clear, pleasant manner. Talk with your audience, rather than at them. And remember... Uh, hello, uh, you're new here, aren't you? Uh, been in town long? Uh, my name's George Johnson. How do you like the party? Every time you open your mouth, you put your personality in it. Mm -hmm.